in the ruins of a home resignation that the help this community so desperately needs may never come. As far as I'm concerned, we're on your own. This is Cavaillon, a rural town devastated by the earthquake. So many homes here no longer livable, a 300-year-old church destroyed in mere seconds, and so many fearing what next. This man tells us there were four people in his house when the earthquake struck. His pregnant daughter was seriously injured. His wife tells us the family fears her daughter's baby, her grandchild, won't make it. When your children suffer, it's very difficult, she says. We're sleeping out in the streets and scared of aftershocks. There is so much damage in this town, but there's been no official response. And that means so many people here have not been able to dig the bodies of their loved ones out from the rubble of their destroyed homes. So great is the need here that any sign of an aid delivery sends people scrambling. This man says he'll never have the means to rebuild himself. Nobody has given us any help, even a tarp to protect from the rain would help, he says. Food is difficult to come by. Landslides like this one are making it hard to get aid in and hard to get the injured out. Still, food did arrive in nearby Camp Perang today as hundreds of the displaced lined up. But it barely puts a dent in the suffering. At the Lakai airport, dozens of locals stand waiting, growing angry that more aid isn't coming. We have no president, we have no lawmakers, we have been abandoned. This man living in a nearby camp says, we are just waiting for God. An agonizing wait for help, growing more painful every day. And Ellen, today I gather another challenge. We learned today two doctors have been kidnapped. What can you tell us? Well, that's right, Adrian. One of the doctors is an obstetrician who was on their way to perform an emergency C-section when they were kidnapped. And because they weren't there to perform the surgery, the mother and the baby died. The other doctor is a surgeon who'd been treating earthquake victims. And this type of crime and the fear of it is another layer to why this response is so difficult. It's unclear who exactly is involved in these kidnappings, but gangs do control uh, the main road from Port-au-Prince, the capital to Lake Kai and the disaster zone. There's been talks of a truce with the gangs, of negotiations. Uh, some aid has gotten through along that road, but these kidnappings show just how unpredictable the situation is overall. And the victims here, Adrian, besides those doctors, are the people who are languishing in these camps in the rubble of their homes, so desperate for help. Terrible. Ellen, thank you to you and the crew. You're welcome.